don't think so, Betty. Are they gone? <laughs> I got you! I got you guys! And I'm never gonna let you go! Never let you go! <laughs> Closing. No kidding. Mm -hmm. So am I. <laughs> now there's a coincidence for you. Yeah, it is. But I am going right home. Uh huh. To bed. Sounds good to me. <sighs> to sleep. I have got another job that begins at nine in the morning. Well, if you're looking to make a little extra cash, I can maybe help you out. And vice versa. At the wrong end of the bar, friend. The girls you're looking for are over there. Yeah, they're not my type. Well, neither am I. Maybe you didn't hear me. Here you go, Vanessa. One trick, 20 bucks. Oh, for a trick. I'll do you one for free. Disappear. Creep. Vanessa, lovely as ever. Oh, Lonnie, you're always good for my morale. You tell that boy you was to be ready at 6 o'clock on Sunday Hi, morning. We're going uh, for Spanish mackerel. Oh, I'll tell him. He'll be so excited. Me too. I love Spanish mackerel. <laughs> good night. Mm, good night. Hey, Carlos. Hey, Vanessa. How's your kids? Oh, they're great. Thanks. Never get a chance to see them. <laughs> tell me about it. Good night. Good night. <laughs>
want you to be good for Aunt Ellie. Mama's got to get to work. She's always good. Oh, seems like that's all Mama does these days. No rest for the wicked, dear. Mm. Yeah, who has time to be wicked? Yeah, come on now, come on, mm. sugar. Right. You and me, Nobody's... we're gonna make some brown. <laughs> all right, you guys. Well, say goodbye to Mama. <laughs> say bye bye, sweetie. Bye bye, bye, -bye brother. Cookies are for later. Hi there. Ma'am. How are they biting, champ? I caught a mackerel this big. No kidding. Ooh, what a fiver. Did so, did not. All right, you guys. Now you're going to go straight to Aunt Ellie's after school. Yeah? She's not our aunt. She's our sitter. Oh, I know that, smarty pants. OK, gone. I love you. I'll see you later. I'm looking for Vanessa Meyer. Right over there. I understand. Vanessa Meyer? Mm -hmm. I'm Special Agent Earl Pulaski, the Federal Bureau of Investigation. This is Special Agent Dowd. We'd like to ask you some questions. Okay. You're from uh, Cincinnati, is that correct? Mm -hmm. I was born and raised there. And uh, how long have you lived in Cape Stark? Oh, uh, let's see, about six months. What's this about? So you'd have arrived uh, around the end of March? Actually, that's when I brought my kids down, but I, I was here a couple weeks earlier to, to, to line up work. And on that occasion, how did you travel? Okay. I, uh, I hitched a ride on a Navy plane. Who got you on board? He was a friend of mine. His name? Look, I had three kids and, and no money. What is his name, Mrs. Meyer? No, I am not going to do that because he is a nice guy and he did me a favor and this could wreck his career. And you refuse to tell us? This is, this is ridiculous. Everybody I know hitches rides, and all of a sudden I've got J. Edgar Hoover on my trail. Vanessa Meyer, I'm placing you under arrest for the unauthorized what? use of government equipment. What are you doing? And for impersonating a Navy nurse. Impersonating a Navy nurse? Now, wait a minute. I never did that. I mean, wait a minute. I, I, whoever told you that is lying. I'm. I'm gonna have to book you, Vanessa. <laughs> it's okay, Carlos. I'm just glad to see a friendly face. I'm just doing my job, you know? I know. No, don't worry about it. Could you do me a favor? Mm -hmm. I just need to get word to Ellie McNeil. She takes care of my kids. Oh, all right, I'll call her. Oh, thanks, Carlos. You're a true friend. I just cannot understand why they are making such a big fuss about this. Yeah, me neither. Trial is set for October 4th in the 6th District Federal Court in Atlanta, Georgia. I take it you'll be representing her at that time, TK? That's correct, Your Honor. Now, as to bail... If it please the court, uh, I've known Mrs. Meyer for six months, ever since she first came to Cape Stock and asked me to handle her divorce. And she has impressed me greatly, Your Honor. Now, here's a woman with three small children, and she has supported that family all by herself, working two jobs and living on no sleep. Your Honor, I would simply point out that Mrs. Meyer's in no position to make bail. Now, would any useful purpose be served in locking her up? Well. I tend to agree, but she better turn up in Atlanta. Or we both got our butts in a sling. Defendants released on her own recognizance. You know, it just don't make sense. Pulling you in for an itty bitty little thing like that. Well, you know, I never made any secret of how I got down here, Ellie. Well, of course not. 
Good Lord, if they start arresting the people in this town, all the people who have hit the Navy ride, there wouldn't be anyone left. Yeah, well, TK says they'll probably just find me. But just in case, I... uh, there's not going to be any just in case. I, know, I just have to know that my kids are going to be OK. Of course they will. They're going to be with me. Yeah, well. <laughs> So I'm going to pay you in advance. That is not necessary. No, I know. It's just going to make me feel better. Here, I got all this money saved up to buy some decent furniture and, well, that fine and all. I guess you can forget that for a while. It does seem a shame. <laughs> well, I don't have to own things, Ellie. I got everything I need. <laughs> you guys remember what I told you. You help Ellie as much as you can and take care of Isabel. Yep. When are you coming back, Mommy? Oh, tomorrow, probably. This hospital keeps me a little longer. Okay. Come here. Oh. Oh. I love you guys. Be good. Bye, Mommy. Impersonating a military officer. Article 2, unauthorized travel on a military aircraft to which the defendant pleads guilty. Not a particularly serious offense. What concerns me more is this growing abuse of privilege on the part of the military, offering free rides to wives and sweethearts. Time we put a stop to it. You are sentenced to three months. Your Honor, uh, the time me. to be served here in the county jail. If this woman has three small children. Would it be possible? Next case. TK. Kathy, hi. How are you? Oh, good. Well, honey, listen. Mommy's gonna have to stay in the hospital for a little while. I, I miss you too. But you just gotta be brave and, and, and smart, like I know you are. And I, I love you. And tell Dean and Isabel that I love them. I gotta go, honey. My darlings, one more week to go, and I will be out of the hospital. I can't believe it has been so long. I used to lie awake at night just imagining the moment when I'd see my babies again. I could see your faces so clearly. I could hear your voices. I could practically taste you. That dream got me through some long nights. This has been a tough time for all of us, but it's over now, and Mom is coming home. Here you are, ma'am. Thanks. Welcome.
wasn't expecting you until four. <laughs> well, I caught an earlier bus. Oh, the kids know that I'm coming? Oh, good. I'll surprise them. <laughs> so just look at all these clothes that I made for them. <laughs> well, let's go see my babies. They, they ain't here. What do you mean they ain't here? They are back? No. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what they're up to. They're hiding on me, aren't they? <laughs> Someone came and got them. What? Uh, from the state. They had the papers and all. Really? Stop kidding around. Like I said, they had all the papers. <sighs> they took my kids? <sighs> trying to tell you. Could you let them do that? Oh, God is my witness. I, there was just nothing I could do about it. But you knew that I was coming back. Maybe you were. Maybe not. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> Either way, I don't want no trouble. I mean, they had the papers. That's it. It's none of my business. The hell it is not your business! I left them with you! I paid you to take care of them! You still owe me two weeks for it. Oh, where are they? Uh, I, uh, where are they taking I don't know. I, where are my children? You, you tell me. me! Where are my children? <laughs> DHS has nothing on them. Who? Department of Health Services. They'd be the ones called out in cases like this. Well, he said they were from the state. Uh, she could have got it wrong. Or maybe they were lying. Oh, my God, it could have been anybody. Uh, take it easy. Well, my child could have been kidnapped. Now, don't jump to conclusions. If um, some nosy neighbor thought they were being neglected, Neglected. They could have called social services, which means that the children would now be wards of the juvenile court. So who would know about that? Huh. Only one person, Judge Carol Jean Woods. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't see you in chambers. It was such short notice. That's all right, Your Honor. Thank you for sparing us the time. Uh, this is my client, Vanessa Meyer. How do you do? And uh, she's uh, got a little problem. I've known Mrs. Meyer for six months, ever since she first came to Cape Stock and asked me to handle her divorce. And she has impressed me greatly, Your Honor. So, uh, we're thinking if a protection order was issued, the children must have passed through your court. They didn't. Are you sure? It would have been sometime in the past two weeks. No, none of the names on this list has appeared on my docket. Hmm. Maybe. Social service has got it wrong. I mean, it's happened before, you know. I would hardly forget three from the same family. No, I suppose not. I see. Uh, you can appreciate uh, how distressing this is for her. I mean, uh, she comes back to town after being away. She for wasn't on a... vacation, Mr. McCready. She was in jail. Uh, right. Uh, and then finds her children gone. Oh, have you checked the relatives? Often it is a relative in these cases. She has no family here. Uh, Judge Woods, excuse me, how did you know that I was in jail? It was in the paper. Oh. So, what do I do now? That's up to your lawyer. But I'm asking you, what would you do if you were me? If I were you? Yes. I'd try to get a grip on my life. Stop letting things get so loose. No, I really have to go. Judge Woods, first of all, I am not loose. No? And I would like to know how I'm supposed to get a grip on my life when I have just lost three kids. You're young. You can have more. Take your hand off me. Go have more children? Is that your Take advice? Take your hand off me or I'll put you back in jail where you belong. Vanessa. Who do you think you are? God or something? Vanessa, stop it. 
Your Honor, I apologize. I, my, my client is under great stress. I mean, even so, there's no excuse for this behavior. Hardly surprising, Mr. McCready. Where did she get off saying that to me? Back to life, Vanessa. I practice law in this town. No. And you sure don't make it any easier. Well, she's not going to help us, TK. She said she's never heard of my kitchen. She knew that I'd been in jail. It doesn't matter. The point is, we've reached a dead end here. Oh, don't say that. But there's got to be some other way to find them. I've tried everything I know. TK, I'm sorry. I'm, 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 I'm sorry I yelled at her. Don't give up on me. Oh, no, of course not. I, I'd never do that. I'm all alone here. You're the only chance I've got. Well, my uh, advice to you is give it a few days, uh, maybe a week. Uh, you never can tell. I just turn up. Ellie, come on, I know that you're in there. I brought your money. Ellie, please. She went to visit her sister. I just... I thought, you know, that if they were in school somewhere, somebody might have sent for their records. We have no request on file. I see. In fact, I have nothing here on either child. Well, how can that be? I had all their stuff sent up last September. Ah, uh, well, I'm not surprised. You have no idea how long it takes sometimes for the cumulative cards to arrive. We have waited up to a year. <sighs> I can't believe this. It's like a bad dream. Mrs. Meyer, don't take this the wrong way, but um, are you sure they were actually in this school? Well, of course I am. But are you sure? Because they were here. Kathy and Dean Meyer, you don't remember them? <sighs> you know, try as I will, I just can't recall all the names. You, uh... You were away from Cape Stark for a while. Yes. See, I was just thinking, it might have been Franklin Roosevelt. We look so much alike, people are always getting us mixed up. They went to this school. That's assembly. I'm afraid I must go. But, um, you try Roosevelt. You'd be surprised what tricks your memory can play. <laughs> okay. Do you remember me? Uh, no, ma'am. Can't say as I do. Well, I used to cross my kids every morning. Kathy, she's got long red hair and she's six, and Dean is five and he's blonde. Oh, you remember. I mean, Dean loves to fish, and you'd say to him, how they biting, champ? You remember that? You called him champ. I call all the kids that. I just feel like everyone is against me here. And I know how crazy that sounds, but my children are gone. And, 
and their sitter has left town, and people are telling me stuff that doesn't make any sense. And I just thought that, you know, the police might be able to help because something is definitely going on. You want to file a report? Yes. Lonnie? Welcome back, Countess. Well, I don't feel too welcome. My kids are gone. Yeah. Seems to me I heard something about that. Well, I was wondering... When was the last time that you saw them? Let me see now. Would have been around Christmas. I took Dean out fishing with my boy. We did pretty good, too, as I recall. What is going on, Lonnie? Beg pardon? What have they done to me? I mean, you've lived in this town all your life. It ain't wise, Countess. Lonnie, to... my kids are gone. Where would they take them, Lonnie? To the Richards County Courthouse. And sell them to the highest bidder. You know where they are, don't you? You know where my kids are. You won't get away with this. I'm not gonna leave you alone until I find them. Let's go. I'm not! Wore out your welcome in this town. Now take your whore and butt and get. That's the message. I won't tell you but once. I find you here in two days' time. You're sure enough gonna be shock bait. You hear me? You hear me, girl? I just got the hell out of there, because these guys were not kidding. And I figured I wouldn't be doing my kids any good if I'm dead. That's right. But I am not giving up, Mr. Patrick. Oh, Luskin. I beg your pardon? Irv Luskin. Patrick sold the business. He went to Hawaii. <sighs> these are some gorgeous children. Yeah. I think so. Mm. So does somebody else, which is probably why you lost them. Kids like these, healthy, beautiful, white kids, they're really in demand. Private adoption agencies. They got waiting lists a mile long. Are you saying that they sell them? Ah, too obvious. They get contributions every year from their grateful clients, all tax deductible. But they're my children. Of course they are. Look, I got to tell you, they could be halfway across the country. New names, new families. Now, I have some friends around the state. I'll make a few inquiries. In the meantime, I suggest you try the local places here in Atlanta. You know, orphanages and children's homes. You go there. Show them the pictures. Just pray those kids haven't been adopted yet. And these are my three children. Okay, this one here is Dean. Let me see he's that. 
Um, he's five. Oh. And, um, Kathy, she's six. Oh. And my baby, Isabel. to be anywhere in our records. Uh-huh. Well, I would uh, like to take a look around. Well, the kids don't actually live here. We just administer the program. Well, where do they live? It's called the Children's Welfare League Home. Uh, well, I would like to check that out. Mrs. Meyer, we really don't have your children. Well, sometimes the names get changed. Excuse me. You've been going through hell, haven't you? Yeah, you could say that. You know, there are free counseling services available. No, I, I don't need counseling, Dr. Wood. If I just need my kids. Yes, of course you do. I understand. It's just... Sometimes, when things aren't going well in our lives, we start, well, wishing for things. Women, in particular. They'll read about the work we do here and... I think and I'm making this up. <sighs> Not making it up Just exactly. Just invented three children? Because I had such a terrible life? And now it's even worse because I've lost them, which is really weird because I didn't have them in the first place. But I had three children. I have three children. The names are Kathy, Dean, and Isabel, and they are six, five, and 17 months. I'll let the home know you're coming. Well, if you see them or even hear about them, I'll let you know. Thank you. I appreciate it. Watch your step there. Get you two tucked in. Turn that. Get yourself down. They may come down now. There you go. Here, Here we are. Oops, thank mm -hmm. you. <laughs> oh, finally. Put that over there. Move Mr. Uh, House. Yeah. <laughs> okay, stop it. Hi, <laughs> pretty girl. Uh -huh. Hi there. Hi there. You guys yeah. eat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Stop okay. <laughs> oh, well, enjoy. Here we yeah, go. you love babies, Here don't you? Go, yes. <laughs> good? You know what, John? Sometimes I think I'm just gonna go out and get pregnant. Just find a guy, somebody smart, college graduate. And marry. No, I've done that. No, I wouldn't tell him. Just keep that baby all to myself. Oh, girl, that's the craziest thing I ever heard. Well, I am crazy, haven't you heard? Mm, mm, mm. Push me. I want to go higher. Come on, push me. Go on, go on. <laughs> Come on, faster. Children's home outside Savannah. Are you sure that it's them? Well, their names have been changed. It's two girls and a boy from the same family, exactly the same ages as yours. Oh, it's got to be them. <laughs> sure sounds like it. <laughs> oh, Luskin. Oh, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Keep the change. Thank you.
All I've told them is that a nice lady has come to see him. Oh, sure. Yeah, that's the best thing. Well, shall we go in? Wait. <laughs> I don't want them to see me bawling my eyes out. <sighs> Let's give me a couple seconds. <laughs> oh, those clothes I made for him. <laughs> Probably outgrown one. <laughs> Lord, please watch over my children and keep them safe from harm. Until I find them. Hey, Vanessa. I could What's wrong? Nothing. My children are a year old. <laughs> That's what you're crying about? <laughs> well, so are you. <laughs> well, think about it. <laughs> yeah, I guess I am. <laughs> sure. You're a college graduate, aren't you, Cliff? Yeah, Georgia Tech. Played football there until I blew out my knee. <laughs> Vanessa. Hi. Hi. I just got to get some information on you, okay? Okay. Okay. Have you decided on a name yet? Yes. David. David. Very nice. I have a brother named David. And the father? He's dead. Oh, dear. I'm sorry. Uh, could you just tell me his name? Do you really need it? I'm afraid I do, for the record. Cliff Vernon. 
Vernon, B E R N O N. Uh huh. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I'll take him now, honey. Oh, now, Vanessa, if I promise to give him back, come on. There you go. There you go. I got you. Okay. Cliff. Hey, Vanessa, how you doing? Uh, okay, how you doing? Yeah, fine, I'm doing good. Yeah. Good. You, uh, just kind of disappeared off the planet. I've been looking for you. Uh, well, yeah, I, I moved a few times. Yeah, well, I checked the hospitals. That's when I found out I was dead. I also found out that I'm a father. Now, I think maybe you used me a little. Then you just disappear like that. That's kind of cold. You're right. You know, you're absolutely right. It was cold and... No, it don't matter. It's okay. The important thing is, uh, I found you. Well, look, I've been thinking a lot about you. Well, hell, let's get a look at him. Uh, you know, I don't think that's such a good idea. Why not? Because I just don't want you in my life, Cliff. I did use you, and I'm sorry. Well, yeah, I'm sorry, too. <laughs> but that's my kid. And I want to see him. I figure you owe me that, huh? <laughs> What's his name? David. David! God! Look at him. <laughs> He's big. What, what is he, six months? He's gonna be a football player. Over my dead body. Come here, Puma. Hey, well, look at this. Woo! <laughs> but this is my child. I tell you what. Woo! Look at that. How you like that, huh? You like that, right? <laughs> well, you just as happy as a pumpkin. <laughs> so, what do I do now? I hope you like it strong. Thanks. Now then, I haven't heard back from all the adoption agencies yet, but I've had some replies. And? No record of your children, I'm afraid. What did I tell you? Oh, well, I just don't believe it, because I know that Someone has got to know something. Meanwhile, I've written to this juvenile court judge of yours down in Cape Stark. Yes, Carol Jean Woods. I've asked her how three children could be taken from their mother without a judicial hearing. At the very least, you've been denied your right to due process. Well, I, I will find them, Lily. If it takes the rest of my life, I will never give up. Never. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, morning. Morning. <laughs> 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 to the boomer, love dad. Boomer. Well, I'm getting the full treatment here. And so are you, kid. Vanessa Meyer. Yes? I'm Sylvia Cass, Department of Social Services. Do you mind if I look around? No, not at all. Actually, we are looking for a bigger place. Uh, who takes care of the baby while you're at work? No one. I mean, I do. He comes with me. And uh, you take the baby to your place of employment? Yes, I do. And uh, where's that? De Michelle Fashions. 
It's a dress factory out on Budmere Street. So the baby spent his days in a factory? Well, it's not a factory. It's, it's more like a big dress shop. Could you just tell me what this is all about? You're a woman raising a child on your own. So? Well, it's not the usual thing, is it? We always investigate to see if the child is being neglected. Well, you can see that he is not. Or being kept in unsuitable conditions. Lady, I take good care of my son. I'm sure you think you do. The point is, we investigate, and we do have the legal power to act if necessary. Act? To take him away. How come you won't marry me? For openers, I don't love you. It don't matter. Cliff, it matters. Look, I mean, I believe people can learn to love each other. I also believe that a boy needs his father. You know, I got a good job with the future. I can support this whole family. We're not a family. Not yet. Oh, boy, you just don't give up, do you? Well, I'm a desperate man. I don't want to lose my son. You know what that's like, Vanessa. You know what that's like to lose your child. Come on. What'd you say? Give it a go. Cut the cake. Come on. Oh, all right. Oh, okay. <laughs> whoa, whoa, bumble, bumble. Happy birthday, Cliff. How am I doing? How am I doing? All right. Give me a piece. There you go. Lucky girl. Look like a clumsy bulldog. How am I doing? How am I doing? All right. All right. It's her boyfriend, oh, yeah. He didn't oh, get the word. Sir, honey. <laughs> Don't be messing with me, woman. Uh, what you doing out there? Uh, well, Vanessa, it's Lily Auerbach. I hope this isn't a bad time. Uh, well, I just got married. I see. Congratulations. Thank you. I have some interesting news. Judge Carol Jean Woods is dead. She is just found out this morning. Now, this could be an opportunity, but we have to act fast. Could you come in tomorrow? Tomorrow will be fine. Good. OK, I'll, uh, I'll see you then. Bye. Bye. Right, thank you very much. Well, the clerk was not surprised. At the time of her death, Judge Woods was being investigated. Irregularities in adoption procedures. Oh, I knew that woman was evil. Now, I've petitioned the court to make her records available, but you'll have to apply in person. What do you mean, in Cape Stark? Yes. I know. You just got married. It's, it's no problem. I'll go tomorrow. Yes, it's all in order. Uh, there's been an awful big call for the judge's records. How long are you going to be in town? Oh, as long as it takes. Well, you all come back tomorrow, and we'll have them downstairs maybe by then.
I started when my husband went to Vietnam and just grew from there. Well, you do beautiful work. Thank you. May I be frank with you, Mrs. Vernon? No matter how nice a handmade item is, it does us no good at all if we don't have a dependable source of supply. Of course, I understand. Well, that's why we only deal with people who can fill an order on demand. And quickly. Oh, uh, actually, I work very fast. In fact, I could guarantee you that you would be pleased with how quickly... David? Excuse me. David! He was here a minute ago. David? David! David! Honey, why didn't you answer me? Huh? You just stay with me now. Uh, I, I just get a little crazy when he gets away from me. <laughs> I lost three kids in 1962. I, well, I didn't lose. They were taken from me, and then the courthouse burned down, and all the records were destroyed, and it's just been... Difficult. Anyway, sh shall I call you next week? Uh, no, uh, we'll let you know. Oh. Okay. Well, thanks. Bye. Bye. How did we do, Mom? We blew it. Okay, dinner's in the oven. You just have to heat it up. I'll be back around 10. And, and don't forget you're taking David to swim club. Cliff? What? You taking David to swim club? I heard you. Okay. So see you later. Where are you going? To a meeting. What kind of me? It's the support group for people who have lost their kids. I have told you all about it. I know what you told me. Cliff, I really cannot get into this right now. I just think it's funny. That's all you expect of me to believe that same old tired story. It is not a story. What's it going to be tonight? His place or motel room? I'm begging you, I'm begging, just don't start this craziness right now. Well, you sure as hell must be doing it with someone, baby, because you, you are ain't doing sick. it with me. You, are you sick. sure as hell ain't doing it with me. Hey there, Boomer. Come here. Hey, big guy. You gonna win that race today? Huh? I'll try. No. Hey, hey. No. Not I'll try. That's for losers. You gotta believe you're gonna win. Now say it. Say it. I believe. I believe. You go kick some butt in that pool. I'm gonna kick yours. <laughs> come on. Cliff. Hey, come here. David. Yeah. Come September, you gonna play some football. And I'm fixing to see what you really made of. Now go get your dad some pop. Hey, Boomer. Go. Yeah. Hey. Go on, get to your meeting. Be a big boy now. There you are. Oh, hi, June. I've got something that might interest you. A letter from San Luis Obispo, California. Yeah? So evidently, a number of children from South Georgia were adopted out there in the early 60s. Really? Yeah, might be worth a trip. 
Oh, yeah, I can really see Cliff letting me go. Is he still giving you a hard time? Oh, it's worse than ever. If I'm out of his sight for 10 minutes, he could just go anyway. Tell old Cliff to shove it and shove off. Did you ever think of that? Oh, yeah. People, if we could all find seats now, we'll get started. Hi, my name is Vanessa. These are my kids. I haven't uh, seen these kids in 11 years. This is Kathy, who's my oldest. She's 17 now. And Dean, he's 16. Oh, and this is my baby, Isabel, who's 12 and a half. Of course, I, uh, I think about them all the time. I think about how much they've changed, how much of their lives I've missed. I remember we, <laughs> we used to play hide and seek, seek every single afternoon. God, they really loved that game. <laughs> I was always it and <laughs> had to pretend like I, I couldn't find it. It's, you know, he's just not pretend anymore. The game has just gone on way too long. And, and I didn't seek you are supposed to come home when the sun goes down, but I'm still out there in the dark playing it, looking for my children. And, and they're out there waiting for me. Waiting to be found. <sighs> Baker takes a snap, dumps it quickly to Walker on the right side. He's got some running room. He goes out of bounds for a gain of about eight yards. That'll bring up second down and seven. As they bring it to the line of scrimmage, Walker and Roy wide to the right, single slot. Baker drops back to the shotgun. Tucker in motion. Baker has the ball. Looks to Tucker. Pumps one. Hi. Hi. Honey, what happened? I got hurt. You mean a swim club? Uh huh. I hit my head in the side of the pool when we were racing. Oh. Well. That's a good bruise you got there. Let me get you some ice, okay? And Daddy yelled at me. What? Why? Because I couldn't race anymore. He got on mad and said winner's play hurt. He said it was a quitter. He yelled it so loud that everyone could hear. But I'm not a quitter. Of course you are not a quitter. You are a fine, brave boy and a real good swimmer. When it hurts too much, you can't keep on. That's for sure. And the snap is back. The kick is up. It has the distance. It's good. Enjoy yourself. I'm leaving. You was always hot to try. Yeah, that's why they took your kids away. Why don't you play hurt? a million times. I'm sorry. I've just been thinking about him a lot lately. 
Do you think they'll be in California, Mom? Maybe. You never know. Is Dad gonna come and stay with us? Uh, well, he's uh, gonna visit. At least he said he would. Mm, no, he won't be staying. Why not? Your dad and I aren't gonna be living together anymore. Cause you didn't fight too much. Makes me sad too. But we're gonna be all right. Let me make one thing clear I am not Mary Worth. Tearful reconciliations between parents and children are not my line. What I do is locate them, write a confidential report, and the rest is up to you. Fine. The price is five hundred dollars. Three hundred now. Two when you get the report. Oh boy, that's kind of steep. I'm worth it. We have unparalleled contacts with all the state agencies. If your children were adopted in California, I'll find them. Looking good, Mom. Hi. Hi. Oh, uh, just be careful with that. It's an antique. German, I'd say. Well, yes, it is. Made by Gerbruder Hubach, late 20s. It's 28. How do you know that? Lucky guess. I don't think so. I used to be married to a woman who collected dolls. Unfortunately, she also collected guys. Ooh, 100 bucks, that's cheap. Oh, it's a steal. But go ahead, take advantage of me. I'd never do that. I wish I had someone to buy it for. That significant person in your life. At the moment, that would be my foreman. He don't call, I don't work. That's significant, but I'd never buy him a doll. No. Now, I might send him one of those little voodoo dolls. You know, the ones you stick the pens in. Then they stay on the job all of a sudden. Oh, he gets a pain right here and boom! He gets a pain right here and oh! He gets a pain right here and oh, wait a second, wait a second. What's that? What just, oh. Oh, his entire ear just fell off. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Tom Scott. What's your name? David. Hey, David, and Vanessa. Well, David, maybe I will buy this doll after all. <laughs> oh, thank you. Hundred bucks. Let's see, 20, 20, 20, 40, oops, 60, 80, 100. Here she is. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So listen, David, I was gonna just go out and get a sugar donut. Maybe you and your mom would like to join me? Oh, we really couldn't. Come on, Mom. Well-designed, environmentally sound, affordable housing. That's my dream. Mm. You should see some of the drawings we've done. They're fantastic. Now all we need is a great deal of money. <laughs> Mere technicality. Yeah. I have been rattling on here, and you haven't told me anything about yourself. OK. I'm recently separated. I've been here six weeks. I work as a waitress, and I sell my dolls on weekends. That's it? Yep. Well, no, but. Coffee and a donut doesn't get me the whole life story. Yeah, something like that. Maybe dinner would. Oh, I'm not ready. I understand. It was very nice to meet you both. You too. Bye.
He's funny, Mom. Yeah, he is. Not a name, not a mention, nothing. I'm never in California. I just wasted all my money. No, you haven't. If money's a problem for you, perhaps we can work something out. I believe I owe you $200. I need a receipt. Hi. Oh. Hi. I've been lurking around, hoping that you'd notice me. The lady with the dried flowers is starting to give me funny looks, so I think I'm all lurked out. Well, I could always go away. I mean, there is this accordion I have my eyes on. It looks like it's hardly ever been played. But then again, I've had my eyes on you, too. You okay? Uh, it's just not a very good day, that's all. There you go again, bending my ear. Would you like to talk? Okay. Today is my daughter's birthday. Your daughter? Yeah. Her name's Kathy, and she's turning 18. And I haven't seen her in over 11 years. Poor brother and sister. I don't talk about my life, because when I do, people just run for the hills. And they just think I'm some kind of nut. Vanessa, look around. Do you see any hills? Do I look like I'm going to run? No. OK. So, in the beginning? In the beginning, I lived in a little town in Georgia. And I had three beautiful children, Kathy, Dean, and Isabel. causes, her doll-making program for disadvantaged kids has been a model for school districts across the country. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present 1982's Friends Who Care Award winner, Vanessa Scott. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> First, I would like to introduce the two people whose love and support have made this award possible. My endlessly patient husband, Tom. <laughs> and my incredible son, David. Here, folks. 
Oh, uh, you know, why don't you and Kirsty take it? Really? Yeah, I think we're gonna walk off dinner. Yeah. Well, great. Thanks for the car. Don't get too attached to it. Stay in the county. We're just gonna party a little bit. I'll be home early, okay, Mom? You better be. Congratulations. Thanks, honey. Don't be late for work. You'll never know, Tom, because you're always late yourself. Get out of here before I change my mind. See ya. So, you want to party with me, sugar? Anytime, darling. <laughs> so, where are we going? I don't know. How about Bobby Havana's party? That's pretty far. It might be over by the time we get there. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a three-day conference for children who are trying to track down their birth parents, but I'd have to go to Washington. I'll go with you. You would? Oh, I'd love that. How are you gonna go if you gotta finish that job? I'll leave David in charge. You think he's ready for that? The guys respect him, the client loves him. He knows more about that house than I do. Well, he is only 18. Honey, 18 is a man. I know. I know. Tell me the truth. Could you go for a donut? <laughs> <laughs> Why won't he let us pass? I don't know. Put this in the bedroom. I just hate walking into a person's home and seeing a whole bunch of. Tom, what is it? What's wrong? It's David. But it's not serious. It's, it's not real bad. It's pretty bad. <laughs> Alicia, reunited with her daughter after seven years, the long search is over. But for hundreds of other parents, the questions still remain. Next week, part three of Where Are My Children? Do you remember how we love this shirt? <laughs> used to hide it from me so I wouldn't shrink it in the dryer. Oh, I've just been trying to put away some of his clothes. There's no big hurry. Right, right. You know, I was watching the news. It's kind of interesting. There's this segment they do about parents looking for their adopted children. Oh. They've actually found quite a few. Well, good for them. I was thinking maybe you should give them a call. Why? Thought they might be able to help. No one can help Tom. I've been looking for 20 years. And I haven't found anything. It's just one blind alley after another. 
just not going to happen. I have to be realistic. You were never realistic before. Well, I have never heard like this before, Tom. This is the worst. This is... I know. Hey, I know. I just lost everything I've ever loved. Not everything. Suppose you taped that program. Taped? Of course I did. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm looking for Terry Hill. Last desk on the right. Nicola, just do it. And you can stay up until 10 o'clock on Saturday night. Okay, 11 o'clock is a deal breaker. Have we got to go? Okay. Well, I'll be home to talk to you later. I love you too, baby. My seven-year-old. She's in training to be a showbiz attorney. I'm Vanessa Scott. Oh, right. Right, we spoke on the phone. Okay. Here's how it works. I put you in front of the camera. You tell your story. And then we all look at the tape and decide if we can use you. Use me? Well, yes, we have to check it out. Oh, I might be some kind of nut. I didn't say that. Oh, it's OK. I'm used to it. I mean, I admit it sounds crazy, but it's all true. My children were taken. I was run out of town. Not to me. To the camera. I have looked everywhere. I have run down every lead. And all I have ever gotten is this wall of silence. The people who did this covered their tracks well, but I know that the answer is out there somewhere. In some old dusty filing cabinet, there is a, a piece of paper with my children's name on it, and that's all I need. Yes, hello. This is Terry Hill of KWVF News in San Luis Obispo. I'm trying to run down a story that happened in Cape Stark, Georgia in 62. A woman named Vanessa Meyer. Just the main thing is, is that she believed me. She didn't look at me like I was some kind of wacko. Oh, it just feels so good to have someone on my side. I mean, besides you. I don't count. No? How come? Because I'm blinded by love. <laughs> anyway, Terry's making some phone calls. I mean... I don't expect miracles. OK. So they were adopted in Georgia, but you have no record of it. How can that be? Uh-huh. OK, well, could you do a favor for me? Yeah, and take another look and get back to me? <laughs> well, just tell them it's for KWVF News in San Luis Obispo. Uh-huh. OK, thanks. He won't talk to me? Fine. Here's how our story will read. Quote, the director of the State Department of Health Services has refused to speak to us about this disturbing case. What? No. I don't mind holding. OK, where are my children? Terry, what have you got? A couple that found their twin sons. Mm -hmm. Good story. What else? Vanessa Scott. You're not still working on that. Well, yes, because I Have think... Have you ever had any corroboration at all? No, but Toby, I really think that we have something... Drop it. Go with the twins. We can't afford to get burned. Next. Yeah, I've got the insurance fraud. Hello. Hi, Vanessa. It's Terry Hill. Oh, hi, Terry. So how's it going? Look, 
I'm no longer working on your story. What do you mean if you're not working on I've that? I've already spent a lot of time searching and, and looking. And, uh -huh. Well, we just haven't been able to find any cooperation. Well. I wish you luck, Vanessa. I really do. Thank you. Thank you for all your help. I'm, I'm really sorry, yes. Vanessa. Yes, me too. Bye. Bye-bye. Cape Stark Time, September 8th, 1962. Woman charged with accepting ride on Navy aircraft. So? Uh-huh. I collect old newspapers. Vanessa Meyer is sentenced to three months in jail by Atlanta court. It all happened, Toby. Every reporter at some time in their life gets hooked on a story they just can't drop. Local judge linked to adoption scandal. Records destroyed in courthouse fire. It's not corroboration. Pretty damn close. Close, don't get it. You find me those kids. You're on the air. Thanks a lot. And the president was greeted by the first lady on his return from his trip abroad. He is scheduled to meet tomorrow with Senate Majority Leader Howard Baker Jr. to discuss the president's tax cut. Thanks, son. In other news, the court in the Ukraine has sentenced members of a religious group to five years in a labor camp for slandering the Soviet Union. The prison sentences are to be followed by an addition of five years of internal exile. The five had asked for immigration visas and had renounced their Soviet citizenship in protest oh, right. against not being allowed to practice their faith openly. The government oh, of India right. arrived today from the State Department of Health Services, dated April 4th, 1963. Ready? Kathy Dean and Isabel Meyer, currently in the custody of the Children's Welfare League of Georgia, have been placed in the institutions run by the League until such time as adoption can be arranged. But I went there. They said they had never heard of them. Oh, well, they were obviously lying. One little piece of paper. How on earth did you get this? Well, I just kept asking and asking and, of course, mentioning KWBF. And I think that finally what happened was some clerk screwed up and sent it to me. <laughs> so, Terry, is this enough? Can you, can you find them with this? Watch me. The first thing we do is we go straight to the Children's Welfare League. Wait, we go? Absolutely. Just watch them try to lie in front of a news camera. You would do that for me? Are you kidding? This is a great story. Of course I'd do that for you. <laughs> well, you gotta go pack your bags. You're going to Atlanta. <laughs> The League was acting in good faith under court orders and admits no responsibility. Naturally, we regret any distress that may have been caused. Thank you. Where are my children? It doesn't work that way, Mrs. Scott. A meeting can be arranged, but only if all the parties agree. That's the law. Law? Where the hell was the law when you took them from me? I, of course, was not here when that happened. The organization is quite different now. Well, you call your organization and you tell those lying bastards that I want to see my kids. I understand your feelings. Do you? Your man, Dr. Woodruff, sat right there where you're sitting now and told me that they had no record of them. No record. And was I sure that I had three children? You call them now. Pushing closer. That won't be necessary, Mrs. Scott. Your children have already been contacted by our Savannah office. Savannah? You mean to tell me that they were in Georgia that entire time? Oh, my God. I looked everywhere. This, I don't believe this. As I say, uh, Kathy and Dean have been contacted. And what about Isabel? Yes. Well, her files are actually sealed. There's been a request for confidentiality. Confidentiality? I am her mother. Those files belong to me. Nothing we can do, I'm afraid. Well, we'll see about that. 
Well, what about Kathy and Dean? What did they say? My information is they would agree to a meeting with you. They would... Why are we going to Savannah tomorrow? Is this a trick question? No. Okay, I'll bite. We're going to see Kathy and Dean. And what makes you think that they're going to be there? Because according to the Children's Welfare League... If you can believe them... They'll be at the airport. They won't show, Tom. Why should they? They don't know me. I'm just some stranger to them who claims to be their mother. You know... We could actually talk about this in the morning. I'm just gonna have to force the CWL to turn those files over Then again, to why wait? I mean, just go public. Embarrass them. They're keeping my children from me. Vanessa. What? They will be there. How can you be so sure? Because if they weren't, with everything that you've gone through, <sighs> I just figure God wouldn't let that happen. <laughs> Not what I'd call an ironclad guarantee. It's the best I can do at the moment. 20 years. They're completely different people now. I could pass them in the street and not even know them. Do they know which gate we're coming in at? Supposedly. Well, I don't see them. There they are. Oh. Gate. Those people lied to me. They never even called them. Vanessa. We just want to go home. We've got to get a lawyer. And we have to force them to open up those files or I'm never... Yeah. <laughs>